today I, I was going to talk on uh, how to renew the fallen accent, but I want to conclude the message on rooted in prayer. I was rushing towards the end of that message because uh, our time from Luke chapter 18. Last time I was here, and I want to continue just do a bit of a recap. But sometimes we, we hear a message and then we, we're very quick to move on, but we haven't fully mined and exploited the benefits of, of that message. So that was rooted in prayer. Today I want to close it with spiritual warfare. So rooted in prayer one, the introduction, rooted in prayer two, spiritual warfare. And then in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus had said to his disciples that men were designed to pray and not to lose heart. The old King James Version says men were designed to pray and not to faint. So it's like as Christians, we have two options. The first option is to pray and the second option is to lose heart. So there's really no way in between. It's either you're praying or you're losing heart. Either you're praying or you're fainting. And the man or woman who's fainting is a man or woman who's beginning to function in some kind of malfunction. It's not how you were designed to live. God created humans to pray. And the way heaven recognizes that you are human on earth is by your ability to pray, that incense is coming from you, that somehow you connect with God. And we said, men ought to pray always. So ought, functional word, pray. And not to faint. Men ought to pray. Men and women ought not to faint. So I said, can you, can you qualify your prayer with always, always, morning, noon, and night? Isaiah 62 from NLT, from verse 6, please, verse 6. It says, Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen, Christians, on your walls. So church, I've called men and women to stand on the walls. And they will pray day and night, continually. It says, take no rest, all you who pray to the Lord. And look at verse 7. It says, and give him no rest either. Prayer is never in excess. Do you know, it says, pray how often? Day and night. Paul qualifies it, pray without season. There's some churches, when we gather like this, it's three hours of prayer, six hours of prayer. I've joined a prayer meeting of 12 hours. Many years ago, all the full-time staff, I said to them, are we all not full-time? Let's do full-time praying. That when the office next door, there was a printing press next to us, when it starts working at nine, we start praying. When the shutdown of five, we stop praying. They are full-time, we're also full-time. And we'll pray and we'll worship and we'll sing. And I'm going to explain the benefit of that prayer. Because in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible tells us, says, give him no rest day and night. In Revelation 12, 10, we also hear, it says, now I heard a loud voice saying, salvation, strength, the kingdom of God has come. The power of Christ is here for the accuser of our brethren. Who accused the brethren how often? So the enemy doesn't rest. Some people say, oh, if you leave the enemy alone, he will leave you alone. Oh. He will oppress you day and night. So your prayer also has to match the oppression of the enemy day and night. In fact, Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It's a nightmare when gates begin to run after you and prevail. We should be battering down the gates of the enemy. So Jesus said, pray day and night. And I looked at the, the benefits of prayer. I said, if you recall, number one was relationship with God. Relationship with God. As many as received him, gave he the power to become sons or children of God. And every child needs a relationship with the Father. And prayer is the functional tool to establish that relationship with God. And what Jesus said is in Matthew 6 verse 6, He said, 
when you pray, when you pray, go into your room and shut your door and pray to your father who's in the sacred place and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So the first place of prayer is in your room. I said, and remember to close the door and keep your phone outside the door. Some people's phones are on throughout prayer. You have to shut the door. And when your phone is on, and when we, like when I have a prayer meeting, people keep checking their phones. It's like, have you ever sat, like sometimes I sit down, I'm doing my work, preparing the message, then Nepa goes, the light goes off. I'm distracted. Then they turn on the generator, and then Nepa comes back, then we switch off the generator. Do you know, after a while, I just say, please, just leave the generator on for an hour, let me finish my work. I need a flow. It's the same way when you're praying and you keep checking your, it's like God is saying, oh my God, Nepal came, they're breaking the flow, they're breaking the flow. It says, and your father who sees in secret, so that the first secret of prayer is praying in secret. In Isaiah 50 verse 4, as Isaiah said something, Isaiah 50 verse 4, is that the sovereign Lord has given me the words of wisdom so I know how to comfort the weary. Now, if you underline the second part, morning by morning, he wakens me up and opens my understanding to his will. How can you live life without knowing what the will of God is for your life? Sometimes when we pray, I say today our prayer is what God has designed for us for today. What is it? Where should you be today? What has it designed for you today? Who are you to meet today? Because in Psalm 139 verse 16, the NLT version says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So your life, in Christianity, there's a concept called predestination. You arrive at your destination before you start. The purpose of your Christianity is a purpose-driven existence to live out the will of God designed for you. And excuse me, the plans he has for you are plans of good, not of evil, to give you a future, to give you a hope, to give you an expected end. But unfortunately, many of us never find the will of God because we're not the one who designed the will. Every once in a while, someone goes to God and says, God, this is what I want to do. And the Lord says, wow, what a great plan, but who gave it to you? I didn't give it to you. This is not what I wrote. Jesus said, I am come to do what was written concerning me so that your life is an errand on the earth. For God, he wrote something out. So it's in that place of relationship, the will of God. You find guidance, you find comfort, you express gratitude and that's where you, are, where you become like him. So prayer is that too. So even if you did not ask for anything you get guidance you're transformed you have joy you express gratitude so that's number one this is fine number two is having your needs met supernaturally in james 4 3 and 4 okay look at this version it says you you want what you don't have so you you are in the flesh you scheme you kill you are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight, you war, you want to take it from them, you are envious and jealous, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And sometimes that asking, I take a, a while, just stay on it. And then look at the next verse, it says, and even sometimes when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong, because you're not in relationship with him. So you haven't done number one, you want to get into number two. You want only what will give you pleasure, that's Babylon. That's just using God. Someone wrote a book, How to Use God. You can't use God. He's in a relationship. He wants a relationship with you. What husband or wife is happy when their spouse talks to them only once a week on Sundays? That's what many of us are like, when he talks to God on Sunday, when you open his word, when the pastor says, turn your Bibles to this place, at this place. So relationship is key in the place of prayer. And then getting your needs met supernaturally. 
In Matthew 15, verse 26, the, the, the Gentile woman, the Syrophoenician woman who came to Jesus, Matthew 15, verse 26, she had asked for healing. And Jesus replied, it is not right to take children's bread and give it to dogs. She was testing him. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed. What Jesus called healing is bread. And the Bible says, pray our Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. So sometimes lift your hand and ask God. For, before you see a doctor, ask God for healing first. And when you're taking medication, pray. It's okay to use medication. Pray against side effects. Pray that, Lord, you discovered pharmacy. You Doctors and pharmacists are tools in your hands. Use this to bring me the fullness of my healing. Every once in a while, you meet people who say, oh, I don't want to do IVF because uh, uh, God has failed me. I want it to be natural. Why? Why? God uses doctors as instruments in his hands to do what he wants to do. We've prayed for people before. They've gone for operation only to see the cancer encapsulated. And the doctors are surprised. We've prayed for people who've had surgery. In three days, their wound heals. And doctors are amazed. What's going on here? Or sometimes the chemotherapy goes through and there are no side effects. That is still God at work. He can do it whichever way he wants, but our trust is in him. Our focus is in him. Lift your hands and tell the Lord, I choose your way, O oh God. The way of faith, the way of power, the way of prayer, the way of a relationship with you, the way of strength. Tell him, who do I have but you? Who do I have besides you? Who do I have in heaven except you? Oh, shut up. Ask him for comfort this morning. Ask him for forgiveness. Ask him for strength. And never forget to bring your children before God. And if your children are grown up, the way you covered them with duvets and blankets when they were young, now cover them with prayer. Pray over them day and night. Men ought to pray and not to faint. We push through, push through in prayer. You've got to learn to use your mouth. The way you use your mouth will determine the outcome of your life. A silent mouth, they say, is a lost destiny. Today we're believing for miracles. We're believing for deliverance, for breakthroughs. Remember Jabez. The mother called him sorrow because she was born in sorrow. But one day he got tired and said, God was watching, but God was waiting. There are many of you here, God is waiting. Men, let's start to pray. Men, let's begin to pray. Bible says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel that you will bless me that you would enlarge my coast, that you would increase my territory. Let's pray. Can we pray for a moment? If you're with your spouse, join hands with him or her and let's pray together. Pray, let's agree. Kalama suta bahate. Ledina suta vandeleva. Lekusa bata. Ledina no suta. Eka radasha leka tupa sikema. Enene moshi ne mraneleva. Ile le 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 bosu brakata. Pray for breakthroughs. Pray for this coming month of August that we will see transformation in August September we'll see the hand of God October we'll see the grace of God November there will be a supernatural acceleration and December there will be manifestations every month will bear its fruits pray pray for the fruits that God has designed for this month Hallelujah. So number one is your relationship with God needs to be nurtured in prayer. Number two, bring your needs to God and ask for the supernatural. And then number three is where something begins to happen to you. Where you begin to walk in a measure of personal power. 
somehow the church has accepted living life powerless. How can you wake up and go to work no power? How can you survive in Lagos without power? How can you travel abroad without power? You were designed to be a creature of power. The language in the spirit world is power. How does the demon speak? Is it English? No. Sickness, disease, oppression, curses. Children won't marry. People die at a certain age. And then we run around. But these are concepts of power. And we are supposed to match the power of the enemy with our own personal power. We got born again with power. John chapter 1 verse 12. As many as received him, to them gave he the power. So to be a son of God requires you walk in some measure of power. So if you believe on his name, you ought to walk in some measure of power. Acts 1 8 says, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we shall receive, is it, ultra, is it, is it eloquence? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea. Your movement around the world requires you to walk in power. How about our founder, Jesus Christ himself? The Bible says in, I think it's in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed, for God is with him. Then how about Paul, the main proponent of Christianity? What did he say in 1 Corinthians 2, in verse 1? Paul said, I, brethren, when I came to you, when I came into the meeting, when I came to your home, when I came into your house, when I came into the scene, when I came into the situation, says I did not come with excellence of speech or, oh, King James says, the enticing words of man's wisdom. But look at verse 3. He said, see how I came. Verse 3. He said, I was with you. No, let's go to verse 4. Verse 4. It says, my speech and my preaching, my talking, was not words of persuasive man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. So what if we were born again by power, filled by the Holy Spirit with power. Jesus walked in power. Paul said, I walked in power. What are you doing? That was when some people went to cast out demons. The demon said, what's going on here? You're talking about Jesus that Paul preaches. That Jesus we know. Paul, we know. Paul, who, who, who are you? Who are you? We don't see you in the spirit realm. Have you been in a relationship with God? Have you spent time praying for your needs? And have you switched to the place of power? And how do we get power? There are many ways to power. The key is prayer. And not the prayer of one or the prayer of two. It is the prayer of tongues that moves you quickly into power. Because the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. And then power came as he functioned under the unction of the Holy Spirit in prayer. Remember John the Baptist said he shall come with the spirit and power. So some of us have the spirit of Christianity. We have a relationship with God. He even gets our needs met, but we don't have power. You walk into a place, you carry no presence. The demons laugh at you because they don't sense something about you. How does that power come? Jesus told them in Luke 28, 49, he says, Tarry, tarry, tarry in Jerusalem. Tarry in prayer until you, you be endued with power. So you can just wake up and go to work and want to have power. If you're too busy, to tarry you're busier than God intended for you to be on the earth and your life malfunction and if you pray just because of problems problems are the signpost that you ought to pray because as that man mama said with up with prayer there are problems but at least you know you're walking in power you know you have God's backing 
you've got to pray until you be endued and there's no time to talk about the streams of power there's the power to be a witness the power to see healings the power to see deliverance the power when you speak how can you speak to men about God when you have not spoken to God about the men whenever we plan a program I say to the people let's plan a program number one item is prayer Number two is prayer. Number three is prayer. Number four is prayer. Number five, get the venue. Number six, get the guest list. So you see people planning, planning program, but there's no prayer. And then one man of God comes and then shows off because he's anointed. But the people are weak. That's why I personally don't believe in rushing into programs, programs, conferences, because people are exhausted. You, you are overloaded in three, four days, a lot of messages. But have you developed the power, your personal power? I would rather meet with the men, 50 men over 50, 50 men under 50, 40 men under 40, and together we navigate into the place of power. Pastor Keo told me something so powerful. Pastor Keo, get a microphone and share. I don't know how you said it, but your words were just... I asked Pastor Keo, we've done this thing for many years. What was it? I never did an interview. I never was on social media. We didn't do programs. What was your answer, Keo? It was, I was so encouraged. Tell us, tell me again, please. Uh, well, what is because we immerse ourselves constantly and consistently in the Spirit. We pray often, we have angels often, we worship often, we share the word often, we fellowship often. We, so there was so much of the overflow of life that we had. And so that just naturally had an impact. Yes, you said something about personal impact. Yes, you mentioned that people you went and you walked in personal impact. So everyone everywhere was walking in impact. Yes. So that overflow of life that we had because we had a culture of constant... Please get up and let them see who's speaking. So the, the, the culture of constant immersion because we immersed ourselves constantly. So vigils were normal. Being awake at night and having vigils were normal. Praying and worshiping was normal. We had meetings where we just, sometimes we spent days, a week, two weeks, and we did three, four hours of praying every day. It was normal. And the consequence of that was that we now function in the overflow. So everything we did had the impact of that. We went with that into everything we did. We went with that into business, into into law practice, into politics, everything we did. So it was that culture that gave us the impact but we, we, but we didn't do evangelism. We didn't have to because there was a natural consequence of the overflow of life that brought attraction. I, I used to call it evangelism by osmosis. Yes. Just people just were, people just came because this. And were people not busy at, at that time? Were there not challenges at that time as well? People were busy, there were challenges, but we recognized that it was better to have immersed yourself because sometimes you find that what could take you two days to achieve without power and without the wisdom and grace of God could take you less than sometimes two hours to achieve if you had spent time being immersed in... So why are people not, why are people, why is Christianity becoming a powerless religion? A powerless activity? Why is Christianity more or less, I mean, it's just the men of God who are powerful? Because we have accepted a, a belief that we can be fed without having to make any personal investment. So people just look to be fed. And whatever you're fed will just be milk. But the only way you can truly ingest and then grow is when you make a personal investment yourself. (laughs) Pastor Keo, you have language, yeah? So we spoke about Acts 1.8. It shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit came upon you. Then we went to Deuteronomy 8.18. Do not say, the work of my hands has gotten me this world. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. He is the one who gives you power to create wealth. Look at Luke 10.19. It says, the 70 returned with joy. Look at the NLT version here. It says, Lord, 
Say, the demons obey us. When we use your name, that was power. He said, yes, I saw Satan fall from heaven as lightning. He says, I have given you authority. The old King James says power, but that's another message, the difference between authority and power. So sometimes we have authority as Christians, but we lack the manifestation of that authority in terms of power. But that's for another day. He says, I've given you power. Give me the King James, old King James version. I've given you the power to tread upon serpents, altars, demonic presence, incantations, witches, and over all the power of the enemy. Give me an NLT here. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. See the way it reads in NLT. Nothing will injure you. Nothing will injure you. Let's go to point number four. So number one is relationship. Number two, needs, meeting spiritual needs, walking in supernatural needs being met. Three is walking in personal power and making impact. You know how you go to the village? I remember once, yes, I went to the village uh, to see my mom, to see my parents. So some people came and said, when are you leaving? I said, on th Thursday. My mom was horrified. Ha! Ah! Ah! She was shy. Ah! I said, at six in the morning. <laughs> Give them the time I was leaving. They will meet me in this, the night before. We'll meet ourselves in this spirit. You go to your village. You're petrified. Aren't you supposed to have power? Oh, oh there's a lady called Morenike. I'm going to use her name. Remember Morenike? Lady came to ask me. She lived in Bagada. And then she moved to Leki. And a strange thing happened, there was a pastor who had imported sand and put sand on the first floor. The sand used to leak into her apartment. He had created Mount Tabora. Then one day in the night, so she'd be hearing her name, Maranike, Maranike, about midnight. So the day she came, so she now heard the man shouted, Maranike, G. She said only her mom called her that. <laughs> so she said, she move? I said, of course you should move. But I move back to Bagada. That's where you are safe. I said, really, I should move. I said, it's okay. Imagine me. Imagine me. Man starts calling my name at twelve. Me by eleven thirty. Ogunshaki die. <laughs> yeah, we give him thirty minutes. Kagbo shahata. He'll be hearing my voice. I will get an army. We'll be groaning. Hikakaha. Enimotobo. Ebabakude. Ikegu. Ashama. Ekeku. Dababa. Daya. I go MFM way as Pastor Jude said. Himatababa. Ha. 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 Ogambo. I'm a medical doctor. Hikandebo. Ashama. Kedebo. Baraka. Is it power you're looking for? I will give you. Pachataba. Hutebe. Ekugu. Ekugu. I didn't learn this in medical school, though. Hey, they didn't teach me this in medical school. I learned it from God. He gave me this gift to walk in power. I wanted to show you some slides. I wanted to show you the origin of spiritual warfare. Because point number four is now taking territory. Because after walking in, you can have a relationship with God. You can have your needs met, but you need to walk in power. But then, thereafter, you need to then push courage. Because as Christians, Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. He's the God of this world. So whenever God blesses us, there is already someone on the territory. So he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So the enemy cannot stop God preparing the table but he can swipe the table he can break the legs of the table and he can stop you from getting to the table so you now need to know how to push back and then your prayers get stronger your prayers get deeper so in this part of the message I teach on spiritual warfare I teach on how God had a central government in heaven and there were three archangels Michael, 
Lucifer, and Gabriel. And in Revelation 12, verse 7 to 9, the Bible tells us that war broke out in heaven. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. War broke out long before Adam was created. Somehow Lucifer was crazy. He said in his heart, I will be like God. I'm, we're tired of God's government. So he got one third of the angels. We don't have time to look at it now. And there were two other angels. If you go to the lost books of Moses, it tells you the names of those angels, Apollyon and some other names. They are the ones who told Lucifer, God is just using you. You can be better than him. And so they planned a rebellion. So war broke out. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. They said they, it went on for years. If you read those books, it went on for years. But finally, Satan was not strong enough. And they lost their place in heaven. And the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray, was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Look at verse 12. Verse 12 then tells us, Rejoice, O heavens, because they've now removed Satan. And you who live in heavens rejoice. Ah, but terror will come on the earth oh, and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has a little time on earth before God deals with him finally. So you're now living your life without power. And he has taken over music, governments, taken over everything. So when Adam and Eve came, that's another story. God wanted Adam and Eve to deal with Lucifer. But then they deceived Adam and Eve. But to cut a long story short, Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 12, Paul told us, we're not wrestling flesh and blood on this earth, though, that those angels that fell came on the earth and they became satanic beings on the way Lucifer was so beautiful that's in, if you have time, study. Honestly, Pastor Jude, that's why we need to, you know, we had hoped to start a class today. I told the law, start a class on the weapons of our warfare today. Origin of spiritual warfare, the fall of man, salvation, restitution, and spiritual warfare. So Paul was teaching these things. He says, in view of all I'm saying, Please, finally, be strong in the Lord, salvation, and then can you walk in the power of his might? So it says, put on the whole armor of God. So we've got to learn about the armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and against the rulers of darkness of the age. Normally at this time in the meeting, this is when we begin to pray. I say, listen, I'm going to share some deep things. You guys need to be prayed up and be walking in personal power. Spiritual hosts. Now, let me break it down. Please give me those, those pictures we tried to show the last time. Let me show you how it is. Turn the lights down a bit, make the place a bit, a bit eerie. And see what principalities do. This is nations and global evil. They want governments. Remember what Lucifer wanted in heaven? He wanted to be, he wanted to rule heaven. So he wants to rule the earth. They take over politics, they want to Islamize the world. LGBT now, some principalities pushing an agenda, and we're all afraid. You don't have a relationship, you haven't tried to get your needs met, you don't even have power. Now, this is a new dimension of taking back all of these issues. Human trafficking. Now, remember, these are just ideas, wars, genocide. When you go to Rwanda, I was in Rwanda talking to some of the Rwandans, when they describe what happened. It's unbelievable. No one can explain it. 
So sometimes there's a conflagration between regions that erupt in genocide. Believe me, this is not how God planned the world to be. Let's look at powers. They are in charge of cities and regions. When kidnappings become like a, a culture in an area, believe me, there's some powers at work. Some kind of intermittent um, gang wars. Remember in Acts 12 when Herod went and killed, killed the pastor. They wanted to kill the other pastors. That was demonic or satanic. Rulers of darkness, they are more institutional evil. So they, they're in police stations. I always talk about police stations. I went once years ago to report a case. They told me to take off my belt and get behind the counter. I said, excuse me, I came to report a case. What's going on? They said, you have one call to make. Evil. You better be ready to go to police stations. Better be ready to deal with customs. Better be ready. If you enter prisons, you can smell the horror. Tribal conflicts. Systemic evil. One little girl was demon possessed. Paul cast her out, not knowing that he had masters. The next thing, judges. The system was corrupt. Okay, well, does this make sense to you? Next, please. Then spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. <laughs> they, they, they come through churches and idol worship and they love choirs. And notice how white garment is quickly becoming born again today. We need to be open, but we also need to be careful. Ancestral shines, if our rock Rastafari, which is wizards, sciences, abrushi. When we were young, abrushi used to attack intellectual small boys, little boys. We, we all had crosses. As you try to fight, but the intelligent boys, once they saw you were smart, they make you a cross bearer. How many of you know that story of Abdrushi in the light of truth? So this is what we're wrestling. I think there's one more slide. Next, please. Ah, I forgot. When Paul gave that we're we're dealing with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness. He didn't even mention demons. So that's another story. Demons, these are the ones that bring you night caterers, night pressers. They, they, have you heard of the near success syndrome? It's just little demons. Oppression, some genetic mutations, nightmares. Triangle <laughs> Okay, household your name is curses, covenant, spirit husband, incubus. These are the people you sleep with in the night. Socobus. So incubus is the man, Socobus is the female. Banshee. You know what a banshee is? <coughs> female demon. <laughs> <coughs> the only thing they fear is Kabosa Hanta who are Matisha. Go in the name of Jesus. When we start praying now, you better pray because when demons start flying, have you heard that slogan? If they are saying, carry, carry, go, carry, go, you better join them to say, carry, go, because they will dump refuse in your backyard. <laughs> Honestly, I used to keep these things and teach only the workers and the leaders. But right now, the issues are just too many in the nation. We have to bring the secret things. That what encouraged me is that my first day in anatomy, there was a professor who came to teach us. So, you know, in medicine, you have house officers, you have residents, you have consultants, and then you have the professors. So professors came very often to teach us. It was as we grew and understood, then they now brought house officers and, and residents to help us through our workshops. So I wonder why we give milk to Christians. We should give them something that will make them grow. When we grew up, we, we used to hear about pixies and elves and leprechauns. Those, those are spirits that are describing. Fairies, those are spirits that are describing. Next slide, please. Send the night caterer. Excuse me, these are illustrations. Don't think a night caterer looks like that. I don't know how it, what it looks like. Placenta eaters. These are the demons. I 
think I've got, I've got to stop today. <laughs> I've got to stop today. What's that woman carrying? She's carrying cola nuts. No, she's carrying palm kernels that night's Ketra. I'm not trying to make you afraid, but I just want you to understand that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Give God no rest. It's the way we are designed to live. Jesus said, my house shall be called what? Is this house a house of prayer? Is your house a house of prayer? Next slide, please. So I keep this slide just for trainings in spiritual warfare. I thought today, show the people the things they ought to learn. Next slide, please. No levels of warfare. So now the next teaching, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna continue this message. See why I couldn't get into, uh, into battle axe, into the uh, floating axe head. I need to teach levels of warfare and there are five, well four, don't worry about the levels, look at the levels here. There's a level called personal level. Personal level, internal warfare. You're fighting doubt. You're fighting unbelief. You are confronting issues. You're conquering yourself. Fighting pride, fighting bitterness, fighting discouragement, fighting prayerlessness, fighting sin, fighting carnality. What this does as you pray and you engage this level of warfare, power begins to come faster. Is this making any sense to anyone? Yes or no? Sometimes church is a concert hall. Sometimes church is a university. Sometimes it's a military institute. That's what it is today. The Anglicans used to teach on church, church militants and church triumphant. The church triumphant is the church in heaven. Church on earth is the church militant. Fight the good fight of faith. War a good warfare. Contend for the faith. Walk in love. So we've got to deal with this level. So you need to sort out personal first. Forget all those things I showed you. Forget about them. Sort this out. So one lecture is to sort this out. The next lecture, let's do the next level, please. Now ground level demonic warfare. Then bring back all the bring back the picture of the night pressers. So underground level, this is where we're dealing with demons. And the truth about demons is that demons, let me just stop here really. Let me just, let's, let's continue this message, you know. I, I need to explain the details that demons, when those 70 disciples came back, what was their testimony? That, the, that God gave us a car, God gave us a house. Do you know that's the testimonies we're giving in church now? Their testimony was that the demons ah, were such. That should be your testimony. That you stop eating in your dreams. That you stop being pressed down before your period. That you stop those demons that bring a marital breakup in your marital blowouts in your family. That you stop that thing bringing convulsion. Some of those convulsions are febrile. Some are demonic. You need to discern which one a doctor needs to sort out and which one you need to lay hands on and cast that spirit out. Some people see snakes. You shut your eyes, you see snakes. Some people just have nightmares every... That's the ground level warfare. That's where prayer begins. That's where your authority begins. That's where you begin to stand. That's where you begin to groan out your personal deliverance. That's where you begin to say, I will not be stopped. The enemy has drawn a line saying, thus far I will go. No, I'm crossing that line. My family is crossing that line. No curse will stop me. No night ketra will, will oppress me. This, I'm tired of this being pressed down at night. Every night you're pressed down, so you're even afraid to sleep. Yes, they buried my placenta in the village, but excuse me, I'm cutting that hole in the name of Jesus. What spirit husband dares come against me? Did Jesus not say it is finished? Oh, shalalabati masuka barat. Amen. So, so, when you receive the Holy Spirit baptism, you receive nine gifts. Of the nine gifts, one, one, 
the gift of tongue stays with you that's the one you then use that gift of tongue enters a place called your broker's area 54 speech center in your cerebellum and then god recall you can recall it from your mind up and use it at will and then there are degrees of that language so you've got to watch the way you use your mouth remember when we started talking on the mouth i showed a picture of the mouth and jeremiah said and god touched my mouth my mouth some people are unable to pray some people don't have language some people don't have longevity some don't have volume you've got to practice these are the tools of life these are the utensils for war what a second Corinthians 10 4 say NIV version though we live life in the natural when it comes to war uh, remember four levels of warfare please just show us the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world so I was telling some young girls I said you want to marry that guy and you go and get pregnant for him <laughs> what kind of weapon is that you're using that's the weapon of the world trouble is going to hit you or you can manipulate signatures and things that's the weapons of the world on the contrary the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world on the contrary they have divine power to demolish strongholds uh, am i speaking to myself only this morning can we raise a house of power the Bible says the list shall be like David and the whole house shall be like God. So today, as we end this message, you see, I want to pray for someone who sees snakes. I want to pray for people. A lady told me a story in their family. She said when they were young, she still remembers their home in the village that they were burying slaves. I said, you heard it said yes she's in her 60s so when i was young i said I, I don't recall that that was possible he said they did it in the village that as they threw the, the ladies in, or they threw the people into the grave they could hear him, them cursing cursing some of us have homes where there's a shrine there's an idol some great some fathers great grandfathers did things and gave children in the future as ransom it's not our fault but then you have to take responsibility look at the last slide weapons of our warfare this is another lecture i hope i'm not confusing you guys today put the last slide up weapons of our warfare the word of god prayer please underline prayer praise and worship faith the name of jesus the blood of jesus the armor of god sanctification angelic assistance fasting all right take it off take it off we've done enough today we've done enough today take it off take it off you see we've got a lot of pastors in the house so when you come to preach you carry this grace man of god you carry this grace you carry this grace that's the band you carry this grace so you guys, it's time to move up to this kind of strong messages and let the young pastors preach the pastoral. You guys bring the strength and the authority to rise up higher. The Bible says when the people ought to be teachers, they still need people to teach them the elementary principles of the word of God. And people have need for milk, not meat. It's true, it's true, but you can't spend 10 years teaching milk. People need to grow. It's tough out there. Now everyone is afraid, this, this protest, the conflict, the confusion. Where else are we running to? We haven't all been called to go to Canada. Even Canada is hard. I'm getting calls saying, can we come back, please? The whole world is in an upheaval. We might as well find God. I choose the way of this and I choose the way of the Lord. Oh, What's the way of the Lord? It's the way of prayer. It's the way of holiness. It's the way of revelation. It's the way of wisdom. I want to pray and release what I call an anointing or a mantle upon you so that this week, 
be conscious of walking in power the power to create wealth go into the world this week knowing that something happened today so the revelation of today just the revelation please step out based on this revelation today know that healing has come to your home just know that curses are being broken know that the end of that oppression at night has come know that you are crossing that line that the enemy drew and said you wouldn't cross know that expansion has come it's time to take territory it's time to make an impact i went to one meeting years ago the meeting was so long the pastor was now asking kiloshiku kiloshiku what remains we were begging pastor adura pray let's go <laughs> It's going to be a powerful week this week. It's just going to... So if you're praying, ten, if you're not praying at all, start with 10 minutes. If you're doing 10 minutes, move up to 20. If you're doing 20, move up to 30. If you're doing 30, double it. You're doing an hour. Can you start moving to 90 minutes? If you wake up at night to use the bathroom, spend 30 minutes. Don't just go back to bed. You can't sleep at night. Use that time to pray an hour. Study the word. It's just going to happen. I just sense it. Something has shifted in this place. Lift your hands to God. I tell you, something has shifted. Hey! Lebato Masikala. Something. I just sense something has come upon someone here. I sense yokes being broken. I sense breakthroughs. There's a lady, you are, like you are fighting a family battle. The Lord says, I've gone ahead of you. I've gone ahead of you. You only need to speak the word. There are children whom we feel we've lost. Today, God is bringing children back home. Children are coming back home. And any curse standing against your marriage is broken in the name of Jesus. I want to speak against slander and accusations. Some people are immersed in strife of tongues. I say that is destroyed in the name of Jesus. I stand against those household enemies, those idols in your family speaking against you. We ask them to shut up in the name of Jesus. I declare, say after me, I declare from today, I declare that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment I speak against it I stand against it I stand against curses I stand against enchantment I stand against spells I stand against witchcraft I stand against every demonic device there shall be no satanic surveillance in my life I break it I destroy it uh, in the name of Jesus. I walk into my destiny. Say, I walk into my destiny. I walk into the purpose of God. I walk into abundance. I walk into enlargement. Now is my time. Now is my season. A season of expansion. A season of taking territory in the name of Jesus. I declare for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. I declare every work of the enemy in my life is destroyed in the name of Jesus. I push through to victory. I have victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come and clap your hands, all you people. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We are serving a God of miracles.